All right, in this video, I want to talk about parametric representations of solution sets. So we know from previous videos that a solution set, a solution set is just a set of numbers that will satisfy a linear equation. Parametric equations, parametric equations are often used to represent the entire solution set of a linear equation. So let's talk about this using an example. If we wanted to solve the linear equation x1 plus 3x2 is equal to 6, we would have to solve for one of the variables in terms of the other, since there are two variables and only one equation. So we can solve for one of the variables, I'll choose x1, in terms of x2. So I could subtract 3x2 from both sides and I would get x1 is equal to 6 minus 3x2. Here the free variable is x2 and the reason we call this free is because x2 can take on any real number. If x2 was I don't know, 0, then x1 would be, well, 6 minus 3 times 0. 3 times 0 is just 0, so 6 minus 0 would be 6. If x2 was 1, then 3 times 1 is just 3, and 6 minus 3 is 3. And you could go on and on and on and choose any value of x2, any real number, and you would get a corresponding x1 value. So x1 depends on x2, and that means x1 is not free. x2 is free. So we can kind of tell that this linear equation has many solutions since x2 is free. So sometimes we like to introduce a third variable I'll call t, and this is just arbitrary, to represent the infinitely many solutions. We like to say that t is an element of r. This fancy E just means element of, and this R just means real numbers. So this is saying T, which is our parameter, parameter, is an element of any real number or of the real numbers. So that all this is saying is just T can be any real number, right? So if we wanted to represent the solution set parametrically, we would use the variable t in the solution. So I could say that that free variable x2 is equal to t, our parameter that represents any real number. And if this is the case, then x1 would be 6 minus 3 times t. And this right here is the parametric representation of the solution set t can be any real number, therefore x2 can be any real number. And if t is any real number, then we're always going to get some value for x1 that depends on t. So alternatively, we could have chosen x1 to be the free variable. And if we did this, then, well, let me do this in a different color. If we chose x1 to be the free variable, we would have to solve for x2 in terms of x1. So the equation, remember, was x1 plus 3x2 is equal to 6. And I could subtract x1 from both sides. I would get 3x2 is equal to 6 minus x1. And if I divided by 3 on both sides, I would get x2 is equal to 6 over 3, which is 2 minus x1 over 3. So since x1 can be any number, we could choose a parameter, I'll call s, and again this is just arbitrary, to represent any real number. So s can be any real number, and we're going to set x1, the free variable, equal to s. And if this is true, then x2 would be 2 minus s over 3, and this right here would be the parametric representation of this solution set, where s is an element of the real number set. So this linear equation had two variables, and we solved for one variable in terms of the other. But what if we had more than two variables? 
So what if we had something like this, and I'll do this in white. What if we had the linear equation 2x plus 3y plus 4z is equal to 5? Well, we want to solve for one of the variable in terms of the other two. So we could choose any one of these three variables, x, y, or z, to be the free variables, any two of them, right? And we would solve for the third one in terms of the other two. So if I chose y and z to be the free variables, then I would have to solve for x in terms of y and z. And I could easily do this. If I subtracted 3y from both sides and 4z from both sides, I would get this equation. 2x is equal to 5 minus 3y minus 4z, right? And if I divided by 2 on both sides, I would get x is equal to 5 over 2 minus 3 over 2 times y minus 4 over 2, which is just 2 times z. So we can tell that x is dependent on y and z, and that this equation also has a solution set that is infinite. Why? Because the free variables y and z can take on any real number. So if we wanted to represent this parametrically, we could choose the parameters, I don't know, m and n, and again, these are arbitrary, to get the following parametric representation. If we let y equal m and z equal n. If we take these and plug it into the above equation, we would get x is equal to 5 over 2 minus 3 over 2 times m minus 2 times n, right? So this right here is the parametric representation of the solution set where m can be any real number. Oops, that's kind of sloppy, isn't it? So m can be any real number and n can be any real number. So we could use this parametric representation to obtain any particular solution. So for an example, this, well, this equation has many particular solutions. In fact, it has infinite. But let's say we just wanted to look at two of them. The first one, I'll do this in green. If we let m equal zero and n equals zero. And I just chose these two values because m and n can be any real number, right? So if we let m equal zero and n equal zero, well, according to this box right here, y would be equal to zero, z would be equal to zero, and x would be, well, five halves minus three halves times zero minus two times n, which is zero. So this would just be 5 halves. So the particular solution would be y equals 0, z equals 0, and x equals 5 halves, right? Let's say we did another one. m is equal to 1, and n is equal to 2. Well, y in that case would be 1, and z would be 2, right? So x would be, well, 5 halves minus 3 halves times m, which is 1 minus 2 times n, which is 2. This would equal 5 halves minus 3 halves minus 2 times 2 is 4, right? So 5 halves minus 3 halves is just 2 over 2, which is 1, minus 4. And that would be equal to negative 3, right? So x would be negative 3. So the particular solution in this case would be y equals 1, z equals 2, and x equals negative 3. And remember, m and n are parameters that represent any real number. So this linear equation has an infinite amount of particular solutions.